I am here to give you a brief outline of the work of this new department. The Department of the Printed Word has a very short history, having been created just 10 years ago. Some statistics to start with. The first intake of undergraduate students consisted of 20 students, which rose to 37 in the second year. And we now have about 50 in the first year, doing a wide range of courses, full and I am here to give you a brief outline of the work of this new department. The Department of the Printed Word has a very short history, having been created just 10 years ago. Some statistics to start with. The first intake of undergraduate students consisted of 20 students, which rose to 37 in the second year. And we now have about 50 in the first year, doing a wide range of courses, full and part-time. My group has been doing a project on the importance of architecture in people's lives and whether it has any impact on the lives of people in general. The main part I have played is in the collection of data to find out what effect, if any, various buildings have on people's mood, i.e. whether ugly buildings make people unhappy and whether beautiful buildings do the My group has been doing a project on the importance of architecture in people's lives and whether it has any impact on the lives of people in general. The main part I have played is in the collection of data to find out what effect, if any, various buildings have on people's mood, i.e. whether ugly buildings make people unhappy and whether beautiful buildings do the opposite. European ecologists were interested in understanding how animals adapt to urbanization, so they set up a variety of traps in both urban and rural areas and assessed the body size of more than 95,000 individual critters. They measured butterflies and beetles, weevils, ground spiders, web-building spiders, moths, and grasshoppers. They also tested a handful of more obscure invertebrates, like a group of microscopic shrimp-like critters called ostracods, and a group of aquatic crustaceans known as water fleas. On average, urban communities contain smaller individuals than European ecologists were interested in understanding how animals adapt to urbanization, so they set up a variety of traps in both urban and rural areas and assessed the body size of more than 95,000 individual critters. They measured butterflies and beetles, weevils, ground spiders, web-building spiders, moths, and grasshoppers. They also tested a handful of more obscure invertebrates, like a group of microscopic shrimp-like critters called ostracods, and a group of aquatic crustaceans known as water fleas. On average, urban communities contain smaller individuals than rural ones. Think of it as a litmus test for your exhalation. To build their sensor, the researchers took lead acetate, a chemical used in some hair dye products that turns brown when exposed to hydrogen sulfide. And they embedded it in a three-dimensional nanofiber web, so the dye would spread out across a large surface area. That distribution gives the sensor the sensitivity it needs to detect trace amounts of H2S. To test the device, the researchers puffed it with different concentrations of hydrogen sulfide gas. And they found that as little as 400 parts per billion of H2S produced a color change that could be seen by the
Think of it as a litmus test for your exhalation. To build their sensor, the researchers took lead acetate, a chemical used in some hair dye products that turns brown when exposed to hydrogen sulfide. And they embedded it in a three-dimensional nanofiber web, so the dye would spread out across a large surface area. That distribution gives the sensor the sensitivity it needs to detect trace amounts of H2S. To test the device, the researchers puffed it with different concentrations of hydrogen sulfide gas. And they found that as little as 400 parts per billion of H2S produced a color change that could be seen by the naked eye. Neanderthals had a distinct facial appearance heavy brows, big noses, and a protruding upper jaw. And scientists have long wondered why that configuration. With the foreheads, it appears, they inherited from their ancestors. But the jutting mid-face, that was an evolutionary innovation all their own. Some scientists say it's so they could use those prominent front teeth for some serious chomping. Others say it gave their nasal passages the right size and shape to warm and moisten the cold, dry... Neanderthals had a distinct facial appearance, heavy brows, big noses, and a protruding upper jaw. And scientists have long wondered why that configuration. With the foreheads, it appears, they inherited from their ancestors. But the jutting mid-face, that was an evolutionary innovation all their own. Some scientists say it's so they could use those prominent front teeth for some serious chomping. Others say it gave their nasal passages the right size and shape to warm and moisten the cold, dry Ice Age air. Archaeologists have found stone tools and cave sites 12 to 13,000 years old in the coastal Pacific Northwest. One find was a mastodon rib with a bony weapon in it. And now scientists at the Hakai Institute and the University of Victoria have made a spectacular discovery. Clay soil trampled by human feet, the oldest footprints uncovered in North America. Researchers were digging several feet below a modern-day beach on British Columbia's Calvert Island, about 250 miles northwest of Vancouver, when they discovered the tracks. They found 29 in all. Some had toes, arches, and heel prints, indicating the people who left them were probably... Archaeologists have found stone tools and cave sites 12 to 13,000 years old in the coastal Pacific Northwest. One find was a mastodon rib with a bony weapon in it. And now scientists at the Hakai Institute and the University of Victoria have made a spectacular discovery. Clay soil trampled by human feet, the oldest footprints uncovered in North America. Researchers were digging several feet below a modern-day beach on British Columbia's Calvert Island, about 250 miles northwest of Vancouver, when they discovered the tracks. They found 29 in all. Some had toes, arches, and heel prints, indicating the people who left them were probably barefoot. The vast, vast majority of everything that's ever lived has completely decayed away, bones and all, even, you know, for animals that have bones and shells. So fossilization is a very rare occurrence. But then if you play the numbers game and think about how many organisms have lived, then fossilization is kind of it was ultimately inevitable that some things will get into the fossil record. But what parts of an organism fossilize, and in which stage of decomposition, can vary, meaning it can be hard to reconstruct a living animal from what's represented in rock. Plus, most of the fossil record is bones and teeth. To find any evidence of the soft tissue of ancient animals is incredible. The vast, vast majority of everything that's ever lived has completely decayed away, bones and all, even, you know, for animals that have bones and shells. So fossilization is 
a very rare occurrence. But then if you play the numbers game and think about how many organisms have lived, then fossilization is kind of it was ultimately inevitable that some things will get into the fossil record. But what parts of an organism fossilize, and in which stage of decomposition, can vary, meaning it can be hard to reconstruct a living animal from what's represented in rock. Plus, most of the fossil record is bones and teeth. To find any evidence of the soft tissue of ancient animals is incredibly rare. When it comes to getting an accurate avian headcount, aerial drones can do better. In recent years, scientists who study wild populations are increasingly turning to remotely piloted aircraft, otherwise known as drones, to monitor their animal of interest. For example, drones are being used to track pods of whales, or to keep an eye on African elephant herds and watch for signs of When it comes to getting an accurate avian headcount, aerial drones can do better. In recent years, scientists who study wild populations are increasingly turning to remotely piloted aircraft, otherwise known as drones, to monitor their animal of interest. For example, drones are being used to track pods of whales, or to keep an eye on African elephant herds and watch for signs of poaching. There are a suite of enzymes that are involved in the capture and release of carbon dioxide and we're synthesising some molecules that can mimic this behaviour with the hope that they can be sprayed on crops much in the same way as a fertiliser and will be taken up by the plant and will increase the concentration of carbon dioxide around rubisco inside the plant and increase its activity and photosynthetic yields. Now we have already synthesised this suite of molecules and have shown that they can capture and release carbon dioxide and we're testing their effect on rubisco that's been extracted from plants and seeing really really exciting There are a suite of enzymes that are involved in the capture and release of carbon dioxide and we're synthesising some molecules that can mimic this behaviour with the hope that they can be sprayed on crops much in the same way as a fertiliser and will be taken up by the plant and will increase the concentration of carbon dioxide around rubisco inside the plant and increase its activity and photosynthetic yields. Now we have already synthesised this suite of molecules and have shown that they can capture and release carbon dioxide and we're testing their effect on rubisco that's been extracted from plants and seeing really really exciting results. Back in 1971 scientists figured they knew how it worked. The cracking sound was caused by bubbles popping within the fluid surrounding the knuckles. In fact, the bubbles were still there. The whole process happens too fast for imaging technology to visualize in real time. You'd need to shoot at 1200 frames per second, 10 times faster than the best x-ray and MRI machines on the market. So using mathematical models, Suja and his colleague Abdul Barakat found that just a partial collapse of the bubbles could cause cracking sounds of the same degree, which might explain why the 2015 researchers still saw bubbles after Back in 1971, scientists figured they knew how it worked. The cracking sound was caused by bubbles popping within the fluid surrounding the knuckles. In fact, the bubbles were still there. The whole process happens too fast for imaging technology to visualize in real time. You'd need to shoot at 1200 frames per second, 10 times faster than the best x-ray and MRI machines on the market. So using mathematical models, Suja and his colleague Abdul Barakat found that just a partial collapse of the bubbles could cause cracking sounds of the same degree, which might explain why the 2015 researchers still saw bubbles after the crack.
Listen.